Hello, good morning, everybody. Really, I, I, I'm saying good morning here in Spain because it's not uh, yet time to lunch here. I would say normally good afternoon. So as uh, rector of Universidad Politecnica de Madrid, I welcome all of you to this closure session of the annual conference plus the General Assembly 2022 of the European Association for Architectural Education held here in our School of Architecture of Universidad Politecnica de Madrid. Thanks everybody for coming here, even for uh, attending this, uh, this event on the distance online, as is one of the, case of, uh, of the cases of, 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 uh, of, of the table. Um, so, uh, first of all, in this uh, session, there will be awards uh, by Lorian Bertrand, just online contribution uh, from Brussels, from the European Commission. She is uh, uh, from the cabinet of uh, Commissioner Maria Gabriel. The, she is the Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education and Youth. And so Lorian Bertrand will provide us a few words on her behalf. So please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Manuel Blanco, Dean of the SM School of Architecture at the Universidad Politecnica de Madrid. Dear Oya Atalay Frank, President of the European Association for Architectural Education, the architect, the researcher, the student. Commissioner Gabrielle cannot be with you today, and she has asked me to provide, as a member of cabinet, a, a message for you. The following words are therefore the words of Commissioner for your distinguished assembly. It is a great pleasure to mark the beginning of yet another academic year at such a stimulating event. Let me start by thanking the European Association for Architectural Education and the Etsam School of Architecture for mobilizing all this intellectual and creative energy. Architecture and design shape our environment, from building the bridges that connect the world to the amazing theater acoustics that allows us to discover ourselves through art, through theater and music. To educate about architecture is to share the ability to change our world, our society, to share the ability to improve, to connect with others and with ourselves to be more sustainable and to strive for beauty together. These principles are at the core of the new European Bauhaus, and it is a privilege to see them being discussed here today. This is what the Bauhaus is about, putting life and community center stage, building belonging and preventing spatial segregation. This is only possible if we expand our knowledge and ways of doing with new and conventional practices with innovative methodologies and digital tools. Space and architecture need to be discussed, debated, sought and resought. If spaces are meant to be shared, then so is the logic behind the organization, the way we teach it and how we collaborate to bring it to life. Especially as the challenges we, ca we face keep evolving from sustainability to digitalization. In classroom, this has led us to create initiatives like the Education for Climate Coalition, a European participatory community for students, teachers, and education stakeholders to act collectively on this challenge. It has also led, for example, to the Green Track, our initiative in the context of the European Year of Youth to plant at least 3 billion trees in the EU by 2030. Yet, our goals, sustainability, quality of life, inclusiveness, require a holistic approach. And here, architecture, design, and culture have so much to give to all of us through centuries of expertise, through philosophies and practices. This is why it is so important to connect culture, architecture, design, innovation, and education. This is why events like this conference are so fundamental why discipline like architecture must inform how we teach and why you have commissioners full support. Indeed, this is also why the EU invests in this architecture community, for example, through the European Union Prize for Contemporary Architecture, the Miss van der Rohe Award, funded under Creative Europe. But you know, 
our work in this arena very well. In fact, let me thank you on behalf of Commissioner for your active support for another prize, the Young Talent Architecture Award, which we have been organizing together with the Miss Van der Ho Foundation since 2016. Perhaps the next winner uh, is among the graduates of your university. Dear friends, I hope that this dialogue between architecture, education, and other sectors resonates throughout this conference and beyond. For that, the architecture and education community must themselves be amphitheaters amplifying this voice, providing all of us with the acoustics we need for such a broad, deep conversation to take place. An amphitheater where everyone can participate as creators of the future we want to build, and where education, institution, and the architectural community can be deeply engaged uh, and participate. I wish you all the best for man the many ideas you will share. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye. Thank you, Mrs. Bertrand, for your words. And uh, now the next uh, round is for uh, Marcos Ros Sempere. He's a member of the European Parliament. Uh, he is a very well known person here. And as well, here in Spain, he has, he's the uh, former vice rector in another, in, in another Spanish university. So the floor is yours, Marcos. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Rector, for giving me the floor. Um, thank you also to Manuel and Oya for inviting me to participate in this event in your school that was, is, and will be also my school too. It is always a pleasure to come back here uh, and feel at home. This initiative, the new European Bauhaus, is growing exponentially across the European Union. One proof is that you decided to organize your annual conference around it. From an unknown project a little over a year or a year and a half ago, we have just come from some months with a lot of activity. The event we hosted here jointly with the school, many events in Spain, all across uh, Europe, the new European Bauhaus Festival in Brussels, and this movement will continue. It is really important, almost crucial for this initiative to talk about the close relationship between the new European Bauhaus and education and the importance of schools of architecture within this initiative. The original Bauhaus was a health and educational project. Its teaching methods are still applied today and both the Bauhaus and the new Bauhaus share a concern for inclusion, sustainability, and beauty. In my view, architecture schools are laboratories of architectural and urban creation, innovation, and research, and they share the original idea from the Bauhaus to reinvent the spaces we live in today to make them more sustainable, more inclusive, and more beautiful. That is why I believe that all schools of architecture in Europe and beyond should be a crucial part of this project. Moreover, numerous universities in Europe are already part of this project as official partners. And some of the members of the European Association for Architectural Education are part of this community. However, this is not the only way to contribute to this project numerous calls for research, transformation, and new ideas development projects have been and will be launched. I encourage you to participate as much as possible and be very attentive to future developments. In addition to this, I consider that there is a very important part of Bauhaus education, the attainment of green skills for future generations. It is essential that future architects are more aware than ever of the need for the green transition to achieve more sustainable territories, cities, neighborhoods, and buildings. 
even in recent months, people still ask me, what is the new European Bauhaus? What is the aim of this initiative? My answer is obvious. Like the historical Bauhaus, it is about improving people's lives. It is about putting, putting culture, architecture, design, and urban planning at the service of the society. For years, we have been spending millions of euros on renovating buildings to make them less polluting. And this is, a good, this is good, because buildings are responsible for at least 40% of the European Union's energy consumption. But from a democratic <coughs> point of view, is it ethical to invest large amounts of money, public money, just to improve the energy efficiency of buildings and cities without also improving the lives of citizens who live in them? We need a paradigm shift. With the same invest, or perhaps for a little more, we can use these funds to improve our quality of life by transforming homes, neighborhoods, and cities to suit our needs. The new European Bauhaus is this paradigm seems. See, an initiative that invites us to think about how we inhabit our built spaces that comes at, key, at a key moment for the European Union. In the legislature of the Green Deal, with the recovery funds and the renovation wave of buildings. Most of the houses and neighborhoods where European citizens live were built in the 50s and 60s of the past century when lifestyles were very different. Now we have fewer children, families have changed, teleworking has arrived, the pandemic has clearly shown us the importance of the home. The new European Bauhaus comes to adapt our homes, our neighborhoods, our cities to these changes, changes through energy efficiency, beauty understood as comfort, adaptability of spaces, and finally inclusion, allocating funds to the people who need them most. And these priorities are very well reflected in the text that from the European Parliament we are ready to adopt in the next months. A report with the necessary indication that the European Commission must implement in order to consolidate this project. The new Bauhaus must move from a project to a program with a stable budget, a program with its own identity that will make the seed that has been planted through Europe grow. The new European Bauhaus comes to adapt our built environment to new lifestyles. The original Bauhaus movement democratized, democratized our homes. Now, this spirit has caught on again in the European Union, and the new Bauhaus drives us to a key high-quality buildings, neighborhoods, and cities that benefit the environment as well as people. Thank you. Thank you, Marcos. And now the, 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 the turn is for uh, Professor Marta Val Llosera. Uh, she is the president of the Higher Council of Spanish Architects Associations. So, Marta, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. It's my honor to participate in this closing ceremony. My thanks to Manuel Blanco for the invitation and greetings to Guillermo, Guillermo Cisneros, uh, Oya Otalai Frank, Lorian Bertrand, and Marco Ross, who joined me in this ceremony. I want to start my speech by highlighting how the important role of our schools of architecture and the conclusions reached in conferences such as the Just Help Can, through analysis, reflection, and the pooling of ideas contribute to the training of future architects 
and consideration of the current challenges we face. As architects, we have a wonderful profession. Yet at the same time, our profession comes with great social and collective responsibility. The quality of beauty of our environment and our lifestyle depends greatly on architecture and urban planning. Architecture, architecture schools prepare us for professional life. They are where we are educated and taught the values of our profession and what it can contribute to society. In them, we are trained with a high level of technical and managerial skills without forgetting the humanistic aspect, aspects that are especially aligned with the new European Bauhaus aims. Architecture is one of the most important disciplines in people's lives. Given that, since the beginning of humanity, it forms a key part of our lives. The pandemic has changed our way of understanding our homes, our workspaces, and as architects, we must offer society new spaces for living, leisure, rest, adapt to new needs, and reformulate our cities so they offer citizens places which are more comfortable, beautiful, and inclusive. In this vein, the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, announced the launch of the new European Bauhaus, created with the aim of improving citizens' lives and which places focus on the spaces in which we leave them, serving to reinforce the links that unit the different European countries while respecting the cultural idiosyncrasies of each. In line with the values of the new European Bauhaus, the Spanish Council of Architects became a partner of the, of the initiative under the conviction that architecture should serve citizens and be in the interest of everyone, and with the commitment to offer all of architecture potential to improve the quality of life in towns and cities through the creation of beautiful places and lifestyles that are sustainable, inclusive, and accessible to all, in particular in response to the climate crisis and highlighting the importance of quality and beauty of our environment as a legacy for us to leave future generations. For the dream of the new European Bauhaus, in which, is, in which as architects play a key role to become reality, it is necessary for the actions we take in the architectural and urban planning environment are based in this goal. However, we must also be capable of disseminating it as widely as possible so that it becomes a dream shared by all. In this sense, the Spanish Council of Architects is working through the network of College of Architects in Spain and the architecture centers and the FISCAE 20, uh, 2030 Observatory to encourage cooperation and collaboration so all, ag all agents involved in improving our built environment, um, professionals, colleges, universities, uh, public administrations, companies and organizations, do so in a coordinated way, pooling knowledge and sharing goals. We understand that the spirit of the new European Bauhaus, which continues along the lines set by other initiatives such as the Davos Declaration in 2018, which introduced uh, the concept of Bau culture and the culture of dwelling, should be present when it comes to confronting the current challenges we face. I would like uh, to highlight the recent approval of the law on architectural quality and give thanks for and recognize the encouragement and commitment of the Ministry of Transport, Mobility, and Urban Agenda which has, which has allowed this initiative to go ahead. The law on architectural quality, in perfect line with the values of the new European Bauhaus, is an initiative which contributes to placing value on quality architecture and its good practices, and is an important instrument for its diffusion. 
a mission in which all the agents involved in the built environment are main actors. I will take uh, my leave by reiterating my sincere congratulations to the president of the European Association for Architect Architectural Education for the organization of the conference and to Manuel, Manuel Blanco uh, for this invitation. Thank you very much. Uh, all so very much. Thank you. Thank you, Marta. And now the floor is for uh, Mrs. Oya Atalay. Professor Atalay, she is the president of the European Association for Architectural Education. So the floor is yours. Thank you. Dear colleagues, dear guests, dear rector, dear Marco Sempere, and dear Professor Baldacera, and dear Manuel. We reached the end of the 45th annual conference of EAAE. As educators, as researchers, academicians, architects, it's our task to inform the next generation of architects, urbanists, civil engineers, to train them for the tremendous tasks ahead, to find their inner compass as responsible citizens. It is a task of transforming our societies and its living spaces towards full sustain sustainability, inclusion, in an aesthetically meaningful way. The new European Bauhaus, in its quest for building an inclusive and sustainable future, relies on an empowered and educated citizenry. This is also one of EA's core tasks. Now, the target of enhancing the quality of life for every citizen in Europe has opened a wide avenue for possibilities to bring parties and communities together. This is one example. Thank you, Manuel, for giving us the opportunity to conduct this conference here, discuss with each other, and also be heard through such important instances like you. I think we will continue with the discussions and working together. EAAE, besides connecting its members with each other, initiating projects, supporting projects, is also part of a pan-European um, association. This is the new European Bauhaus Collective. I'm sure you have heard about this. With 17 associations from different, different segments also working in terms of the new European Bauhaus initiative. Now, I think one thing I would really like to uh, say again is that the use of the word beautiful is a key element in such a highly political and broad initiative should make us all work even more courageously. And it fills me with hope. The new European Bauhaus Initiative has reached several milestones already, but the work is, of course, still very much in progress. Here in Madrid, thanks again for having the opportunity to get a closer look at all levels of work, and for all of you who participated, who has expressed their opinions and also showed us their projects in this realm. As I'm coming to the end of my remarks, I again wish to extend my sincerest gratitude to the hosts of this annual conference, to the rector of Etsam, Guillermo Cisneros Perez, excuse me if I'm not saying it correctly, <laughs> the rector, thank you so much, Manuel Blanco, our dean, Managing Director of Etsam and esteemed, esteemed member of EAAE. And to all his team here in Etsam, I allow me to say 
the two names that I know, I'm sorry for the other team members that I don't have your full names in front of me, but especially Nicolas Marin and Rodrigo De Leal. Thank you all. Thank you very much for all your efforts for bringing this community together and build up further bridges. And I hope to see you next year in Turin. Thank you very much. Thank you, Oya. Now we go to Professor Manuel Blanco. He's the director dean of our School of Architecture of Universidad Politecnica de Madrid. Dear Manuel, the floor is yours. Thank you, Rector. What to say? I have been waiting this moment, all of you living, everything organized, everything done, and, uh, and we in peace in this school. But I don't want you to leave. I am so happy having you here. We have spent three days talking about beauty. Alberto was talking about beauty, talking about sustainability in the territory with a wonderful woman architect, full of passion, Karma Pinoz, with more coal, but very clever and very advanced for their times, uh, Avalos and Sienkiewicz. And today, talking about being together, two Pritzker that came not to talk about their work, but all of us being together. Together in the year of the work, <sighs> together with Irina Masevko and Daria Oshitchanova. From Kharkiv School, our friends here, please, can you raise a moment? Can you stand up? They came from Ukraine. <laughs> Together we saw you, friends, from everywhere. Sharon Hart, welcome to our school. Welcome to this side of the Atlantic Sea. The, the association, ACSA, that this school belongs also. With Michael Monti, we all know Michael. Michael has been everywhere, he's in our landscape. When we start being things anywhere, we discover that Michael is somewhere. But Thomas Bonnier from UIA, the present president of UIA, sent her greetings, his greetings, he's now in Zambia. Together with the things of my school, all my vice deans, Nicolás, Rodrigo, Marta, that helped us to organize this with Leube, Javier Leube, and Fernando Vela from the director's team. My friends, I don't know what to say. I am seeing my brothers and sisters. I am seeing Ivan from Valencia, and Felix from Barcelona, and Carlos from Pamplona, and Elsa from Las Palmas. <laughs> And Polimi, that is always uh, being or not being, Edin, Ilaria. I am seeing all of you, I am happy. And I don't know how to express the gratitude for all of you coming to us. Also, to my university, Universidad Politécnica de Madrid. My rector was in holidays, I made him come back. And he came back, and making people to come in the middle of August, beginning of September is not an easy thing. And of course, the university put money to do this. And the government put money in a grant we have for New European Bauhaus. This school has been a leader of New European Bauhaus, and we have been talking about that all the time with Ana Ramos, all the time with Ana. Every time I go to a place, Ana is there. If there is a fixed point in the cultural, architectural landscape, it's you. And what Mies van der Rohe organization has done. Marcos, thank you very much for helping us in this labyrinth, in this garden, that is European Commission and that's European Parliament. 
and helping us to guide and to arrive to the two commissioners. We have talked about this Congress with Commissioner Maria Gabriel that would have liked it to be here and saying us, Lorian Bertrand, thank you very much, Lorian, for being with us today. Thank you also to Commissioner Elisa uh, Ferreira that couldn't attend but now to have our works and send Simeona Manova for the first day. We have made a lot of noise. Bruselas has heard us, and that's very important because I don't know if this is being built bottom up or top down, and I don't care. What I know is that we have to make our voice heard, and we have talked very clearly during these days, in all the panels, in all the sessions, and I hope that when we publish that proceedings, that will be a very important book in the building of the new European Bauhaus. Thank to all of you for all your work, for being here, for being together, for estar juntos, por ser amigos, por ser hermanos, por ser hermanas, por estar en la Universidad Politécnica de Madrid. Muchísimas gracias a todos. Uh, dear Manuel. Now a few words on my side before finalizing this closing session of the annual conference in General Assembly 2022 of the EAAE. So um, first of all, well, I will say I was in holidays, but uh, I don't know if holidays uh, happened uh, some time ago, but uh, the, the hour, the first hour after the holidays is just a time where holidays are forgotten and we have new energy to start the new period that, uh, well, it's a challenging period, uh, maybe a difficult period, but in a way a challenging period, as always difficulties put us in challenges. So, um, first of all, I will say that uh, this is the first uh, time that uh, this um, uh, assembly, General Assembly, is uh, happening after the pandemic in a completely presential format. I think it's like that. And um, so I should uh, say that we must celebrate that we are coming again to the normality that really we're uh, uh, waiting for more than two years. It's a very long period. So, uh, after that, I would like to refer to um, part of the message of uh, our president of the association that uh, I was reading before coming here when she was saying things like it's a quest uh, for building an inclusive and sustainable future. Also, the European Bauhaus Initiative relies on empowered and educated citizens. The initiative points out that architecture and urban planning only have an effect when interdisciplinary approach is applied to tackle uh, with uh, global issues faced in architecture and urban planning, such as the growing population, the widening gap between rich and poor, the aging society, migration, climate change, mobility, scarcity of land, affordable housing, fragile ecosystems, etc., etc. A lot of things that uh, we have in, in mind every day and that uh, currently are uh, on the way of the definition of the architecture in Europe. Uh, now, uh, within the concept of the Bauhaus that has been pushed uh, by uh, the president of uh, the European Commission, as it has been said a few minutes ago by, by Marta. So, uh, and again, is the, the, here is the support from the European Commission by the presence of a uh, delegate of the Commissioner Gabriel. Uh, this approach of interdisciplinarity is something that we make every day. And, well, for instance, uh, here in, in our university, 
we are coordinating one of the university, uh, one of the uni European universities of the program of European universities of the European Commis uh, Commission. Is, um, the name is of the initiative is ELISA, and we are in this uh, way to find solution to harmonize the different legislations in Europe. Here is an association for education because we are here to educate people. And so uh, we must find a solution to harmonize those, those different legislations in Europe to achieve uh, international recognized credentials for students to build joint programs not only joint degrees, but joint programs that is uh, usually now set this, this, this concept going beyond uh, the joint degrees towards the joint programs that include both the bachelor and the master level where the education and architecture must find its place at the end of the master level. And everything accredited in different uh, accreditation agencies of the different countries and being recognized by other uh, uh, agencies uh, in an exercise uh, inter, uh, inter Euro, Europe uh, throughout through the different borders of the state members. So um, you know that uh, coming uh, coming back to the specific issues of architecture, that we must find a road to provide education in this uh, in this in this way. And now here under the concept of Bauhaus, as, as it is the, the, the concept that is leading this, uh, this uh, edition of uh, General Assembly and the annual conference of the association. So I wouldn't like to go uh, to extend uh, more. Uh, and I go to the thanks, thanks to, um, obviously to the school, the uh, director dean, the Manuel, the Manodo. Thanks for being the leader of the organization, the local organization here in Madrid, and to, 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 to be able to, to, to build something that's going beyond uh, the organization of the conference uh, that's consisting of joining people here, joining friends, joining people to build something together. And, and th this is important to, to, to recall that after the pandemic years, it's an important effect to be all together in one place in Europe to build something together. So thanks a lot, uh, dear Manuel. Thanks to the president, thanks uh, to the president of the European Association for Architectural Education. Thanks, uh, Professor Atalai, uh, for having chosen Madrid for this edition of, of, the, of, the, of, of the conference. Thanks to the uh, support and always present uh, presence of uh, the Higher Council of, of Spanish Architects Associations. Thanks to our uh, uh, invited uh, person here coming from the European Parliament, uh, despite of very well-known person here. You said this is you, your house. Please feel at, uh, at home. Make yourself at home and. Uh, Thanks always for the support that uh, we are always receiving from the European institutions, in this case from the European Parliament and from the European Commission. And I go now to the Commissioner Maria Gabriel, who has provided us here with her delegate, Lorian Bertrand, here. Thanks to the organizing committee, both the local committee in Madrid and the committee from the association. Uh, to have uh, uh, here a common task to, to, to be here, to build something here together. Thanks to all attendants, all of you, the directors, uh, deans of schools, and presidents of different associations of architects throughout Europe. Thanks uh, all of you for attending this event here. Thanks all to all the speakers, to all the conductors of different sessions and round tables. And finally, I hope Why not? For sure. My rector knows that I am not very good in protocol. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Tadella. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Johan. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Ilaria. Eh? I need more board members. Did you say that? Mia, please, Mia, always Mia. Doug, I guess I started with Doug.
Johan already said. Uh, Roberto, thank you. We were already talking in, in Patrick, I already said. So thanks to you. To Diego. Thanks to you, Oya. Without the council members and all the talking we have had during this year with my team, with them, all that has been done here wouldn't have been would have been impossible. So thanks to the council, thanks to the association. Thanks to my rector for leaving me to say it. Oh, it's always because um, the names of, of, of the people must be always put on the table. So thanks, thanks, uh, Manuel, dear Manuel. Finally, I hope, we hope, you have had a nice stay in Madrid. Perhaps somebody of you will extend throughout the weekend here. So um, uh, stay well here. Try to enjoy more Madrid if possible. Uh, it's not so hot as in the previous days, so now it's starting a more smart, a smarter time uh, towards the autumn here in Madrid. Uh, the color is starting again in the autumn because, you know, the summer is, is, is flat in the spectrum, the color, but now that the autumn is better. Try, try to enjoy Madrid more, and, um, and thanks for being here, doing all together. European architecture in our School of Architecture of Universidad Politecnica de Madrid. Thank you very much. Session is over. And now we have lunch at the museum at yesterday. <laughs>